All right, so we're back with lesson two. This lesson is titled Whole Number Operations. Again, I'm in the Kaplan GED 2016 edition. So if you have a different edition, just look in your index and find whole number operations under the heading number sense and problem solving. And we're gonna be doing addition and subtraction. Um, addition, you can have some of the terms would be sum or total that they would give you to cue you in that you're going to be adding. For subtraction, they may ask you for the difference or they may ask you how much more one thing is than another. So the examples that they gave us in example one, they ask us to add three numbers. Those numbers are 40, 129, and 24. Sometimes when we're adding, we have to regroup. So I feel certain that that's what they're going to have us do with these numbers. So I'm gonna line them up vertically so that I can put them in numerical order and line those up. So our first number is 40. Our next number is 129. Okay, and then our next number is 24. Okay, going back to our last lesson, we see that we have all of these have a number in the ones place, all of these have a number in the tens place, but only one has a number in the hundreds place. So we need to line those up from right to left and make sure that they are in line um, with their ones, their tens, their hundreds, and so on. So if we're adding those together, we look in our ones column and we start there first. We have a zero and a nine, that's just going to be nine. And then we have a four. Nine plus four is 13. So again, this is our ones place. So if we have the number 13, I'm gonna go up here and write it in. I wasn't really planning on doing that, so it's kind of squished. But we see that the three is in the ones place. We can't put a 10 in the ones place. So we're gonna regroup and we're gonna carry that over and add that one in with our tens column. So now we have one plus four plus two plus two. So one and four is five, five and two is seven, seven and two is nine, okay? So we don't have any other numbers, so we don't have to regroup there. Now let's just address the numbers in our hundreds column we don't have but one, and it is the number one. So we just bring those down in our addition. So we have our total is 193. So 40 plus 129 plus 24 is 193. Okay, let's look at our example two. If Sue is 57 and Kathy is 38, how many years older is Sue? Well, do you think we should add or subtract those numbers? Well, if we add them together, that's not gonna tell us anything but their combined age. So they're asking us how many years older is Sue? So that means that we need to subtract. So we need to find out the difference between their ages, okay? So let's start with our greatest number first, and that is 57. And we're gonna subtract or take away 38. Okay, 57 is Sue's age, 38 is Kathy's age, okay? So if we start to subtract here, again, we always start with our ones place when we're doing whole numbers, okay? And we cannot take eight from seven, okay? If you had, we'll use cookies again, if you had three cookies and I asked you for four, you couldn't give me what you don't have. So what does the seven need to do? It needs to borrow from the number beside it, which is the five. So we're gonna borrow a 10 from the 10's place. So this five is only going to be a four because we took a 10 away and we're going to add that to our seven. So I'm gonna mark this seven out and rewrite it so it's not confusing. Our seven becomes a 17 because we borrowed 10 from the guy next door, okay? So now we have 17 minus eight. We can do that, right? If we have 17 of something, we can easily give away eight. So 17 take away eight is going to be nine, okay? All right, and now let's look. We're no longer subtracting three from five because we borrowed that 10. There's only four tens left here now. So now we have four take away three, and that will leave us with one. So our answer is 19. 
So we would say that Sue is 19 years older than Kathy, okay? Our example number three asked us to find the difference between 205 and 67. So that's just asking us to subtract those numbers to find out what the difference is. So let's write those vertically because we like to line those numbers up whenever we can. It makes it a lot easier for us. So 205 minus 67. All right, so we're looking at this. And this one, oh, a little complicated here, I see. We can't take away 7 from 5 because it's more. We're not dealing with integers here. So we've got to do something. So if we go to the guy next door and say, hey, can I borrow 10? Well, we can't because what is that number? That number is a 0. So now it's getting a little bit tricky. So let's see what we can do. All right. Hope is not lost. We can still work this out. We're going to go over to our hundreds place. And we're going to ask this guy in the hundreds place, hey, can we borrow a hundred? Okay. So we're going to take away this two, and it's just going to be 100 because we're borrowing one. So our zero here is going to become 10. How did that happen? Well, we borrowed a hundred and 10 tens equals 100. So now we have 10 tens here. Now we can borrow, right? So let's take one 10 away from our neighbor, and he's gonna be left now with nine tens. We're gonna add one over here. So our five becomes 15, okay? So this is just one of those subtraction problems where we had to go all the way across in order to find a number that we could borrow from, okay? So we went to our next door neighbor. They didn't have anything. So we had to go to the next door neighbor again. They had something we could borrow. So we borrowed there. So now our new numbers are one, nine, and 15. So if we take seven away from 15, we have eight left. All right, and if we take six away from nine, we have three left. And we don't have a number here. So if we take zero away from one, we have one left, okay? So the answer here is 138. 205 minus 67 equals 138, okay? That is it for lesson two, and we will be right back with lesson three. Thank you.